This is what it's like behind the counter at a local Japanese tempura restaurant. So I'm back with another behind the counter video and today we are in Tokyo Roppongi and I'm going to be taking you behind the counter at a local tempura restaurant. But like always before I start if you guys want to see what I'm doing on the daily check out my Instagram account. If you guys want to help support the channel check out the Tokyo and Japan merch and if you have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels check out my Discord community. Alright let's go behind the counter. Here we go. I'm taking you inside to show you never seen before footage of what really happens at a super local Japanese restaurant. This time at a Japanese family owned straight up Edo style tempura restaurant named Tempura Mikaku, which is only a three minute walk from exit three of Roppongi Station. This restaurant has been in business since 1931. Originally opened in Nihonbashi, it later relocated to this spot. Oh, one of the workers is already here. Good morning. That's Mori-san. His grandfather originally opened this shop about 90 years ago, and I guess he's following in the family business. And that's Iketani-san, currently the head tempura chef. So what are you gonna do first? Apparently, the owner and head chef, Mori-san's father, is currently out recovering from back and knee surgery. How are you handling all of it? Oh really? How long have you been working here? Oh, he's preparing the traditional Japanese offering to their kamidana, aka family altar. He says that they make an offering every day. After that, he starts working on getting the kitchen prepared. Damn, he's working with a lot of long cutting boards. Yes. And there's one more worker. I guess he had to do the kaidashi, ingredient shopping before starting work. So what are you doing now? Oh, he's preparing the oil. How much do you use at one time? Apparently their shop uses a new batch of oil each time they cook. So twice a day for lunch and the other for dinner while also adding fresh oil as they cook when needed. What's that? How long have you been doing this kind of job? So he's originally from Kyoto and worked as the head chef for a traditional Japanese style restaurant and eventually moved to Tokyo and started working here to further master his skills as a tempura chef. Is there any difference in the work prep for tempura compared to other foods? So what's your favorite tempura? And this is the seafood for today's lunch. Oyster, wakasagi fish, and anago, salt water eel. So how do you decide who fries at lunch and dinner? <laughs> so you won today? <laughs> Meanwhile, in the back kitchen, they're making dashi. Wow, it smells so good. He says that this dashi is a key ingredient to making everything he's preparing delicious. That's tensuyu, the dipping sauce for the tempura. And this one here is miso soup. So what are you responsible for in the morning prep? He says that the hardest part is to produce the same exact taste and quality each and every day. So did you have to study a lot for this? What's that? Agedama are the tiny bits of fried tempura batter left after frying tempura and is commonly used as a topping for udon and other Japanese dishes which adds a light and crispy texture. Usually restaurants charge a few dollars for a bag of agedama but this shop offers it to local restaurants and customers for free. 
Are you married? What about kids? Oh, how old is your son? And you? I see the average worker age at this restaurant is pretty high. So, what are you into? Why do you like it? He says that he usually participates in carrying the heavy shines through the streets and many different Matsuri festivals, but because of COVID, it's been cancelled all throughout Japan this year. Do you have a Mikoshi Dako? I did a Matsuri once too, in Shimo Kitazawa. Let's film when you go next time. The shop buys seafood directly from intermediate wholesalers, who they have developed a long time relationship with. While many other restaurants these days order on the phone to be time efficient, this shop still visits the market to handpick the food that's served to their customers. Now they're preparing the Hanjiku Tamago, soft boiled eggs used in their tempura. These days they prepare about 30 eggs for the lunchtime service. What do you like about making tempura? What's the most important part? Apparently, even things like the temperature and the day's weather affect how the tempura comes out, so he needs to make adjustments every day. Oh wow, he's still preparing the shrimp! Apparently, shrimp is one of the most time consuming items when it comes to the tempura prep. And dinner? So, what's your hobby? What do you draw? Cool, cute manga. I like the giants. Ah, so. Tokyo Giants. What team do you like? Why? Wow, you got baseball cards? Baseball cards, all baseball cards. He says he used to play kusa yaku, amateur baseball. Were you any good? Oh, it seems like they're talking about reservations. He needs to make sure that they prepare the correct amount of ingredients based on their expected customers. How long have you been working here? He says though he really enjoys working at the restaurant as it allows him to meet, talk, and learn many new things from different people he comes across every day. By the way, where'd you grow up? How was your dad growing up? So Moni san, how's business these days? Roppongi is usually a busy area in Tokyo with many people on the streets throughout the day and night, partly due to many IT, finance, and other such companies in the area. However, many of the office workers in the current climate work remotely even to this day, so the area is generally much quieter. I wanted to step outside real quick and just give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. If y'all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace for my website, Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Whether you're starting your passion project or building a business, Squarespace has all the tools to get it done while also looking ultra sleek and professional at the same time. They support numerous portfolios and gallery designs which you can customize and even password protect so the right people see your work. Use its fully integrated blogging tools and commenting features such as threaded comments, replies, and likes to help engage your community. And my personal favorite, built-in analytics to see how your visits, unique visitors, and paid views trend over time. There you go, go to squarespace.com today for your free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Paolo from Tokyo and get 10% off your first domain or website. All right, let's go back inside. Cool, rice is ready to go as well. They use 100% pure koshi hikari rice from Shirakawa Fukushima, known for its beautiful luster and stickiness which creates a slightly sweet umami as you eat. Now he prepares the nukazuke, a Japanese method of pickling using rice bran. It's served for dinner but it takes time for the ingredients to ferment, so he prepares it in the morning. Did you finish preparing everything? What are you gonna do for another hour? 
すぐ来ないよ。今暇だからね。下手したら12時10分ぐらい前だとかそれね。He says that lunchtime is supposed to be tougher than dinner, but because of COVID, it's a lot slower than usual. Hey, what are you doing on your phone? <笑> oh, you like flight simulators? <笑> I guess that's one way to make time fly by. Oh, damn, he's checking the oil temperature with his finger. Doesn't it hurt? Just before lunch hour starts, he cooks all the delivery orders that they receive via delivery apps. What delivery apps do you use? Walt and Menu and Uber Eats and Chompy. That's a lot. And there goes the delivery. How convenient is that? Now the shop's open for business. By the way, the shop uniform he's wearing is a shirt commonly worn during Japanese Matsuri festivals called Koi Kuchi. Definitely feel that Matsuri vibe here. Here comes the first customer. Finally, it's time to fry. Why'd you do that? Yeah, there's nothing like hearing the fresh tempura batter crackle in the hot oil. Oh, something a bit unique about the shop is that the tempura chefs use real deal drumsticks to fry their tempura. Mori san's dad, a former jazz drummer, is the one who started this. Apparently, regular chopsticks are much thinner and eventually break after so many washings, while drumsticks are made out of hickory, which is very strong and hard, so it lasts much longer over time. I like it. Practicality with style. When the shop creates their tempura bowls, they usually work as a pair. One fries, while the other is responsible for the sauce and plating. Cool, the first tendon tempura rice bowl is complete. Hi, can I ask you a few questions? Do you come here often? What did you order today? Thank you. By the way, the shop uses a secret blend of sesame oil and cottonseed oil, specifically selected for their style of tempura. In fact, the sesame oil that they use is created using a traditional low compression technique called tamajime, which uses absolutely no chemicals in the process, helping produce its signature rich and full sesame aroma. Excuse me, do you mind if I ask you some questions? Do you come here often? Why? The shop also uses pesticide free vegetables grown on a farm in Kanagawa. Well, at least most of the vegetables, as some of the vegetable ingredients, aren't grown on that farm. Either way, fried fresh vegetables count me in. The shop even offers salted only tempura without sauce, so you can enjoy that farm fresh even more. Hi, can I ask you a few questions? Why did you guys come here today? <laughs> What's your favorite? <laughs> What's unique about the tempura here? <laughs> the chef makes it look so easy to make, but the reality is it takes a highly experienced chef to deliver a consistent quality tempura. Understanding the subtle details of how much batter to use for each ingredient, maintaining the right temperature, and knowing how long to cook each one is a skill only mastered over time. Apparently, the chef can fry up to four bowls worth of ingredients in the tempura pot, and with so many things to take into account all at once, he needs to remain focused the entire time. So, what's the most important thing to be aware of during lunchtime? 
Have you made mistakes with orders before? What do you do then? Oh, has anyone ever got super mad? Gotta love Japan. Are you done with lunch time? <laughs> <laughs> the lunch beak is over, but there's still a few customers who come in until 2. Once the store slows down though, he starts to clean and organize the kitchen working area. At the end of lunch, the staff work diligently to completely clean up the kitchen area, so that it's ready for dinner time when the shop reopens. The shop even takes apart and scrubs down the frying area so it's spotless for the next time's use. It's all a part of their daily routine. <laughs> Ah, that's why Mike always gets stomach aches. Tempura specialty restaurants like Mikaku don't just throw away the oil though. They hand it over to designated collection companies who recycle the oil for other purposes. And there goes the last customer. Wow, that grilled fish smells so good! Finally, it's time for the workers to have their own lunch. Cool, it seems like one of the vendors is dropping something off. Where's your factory? Cool beans, thank you! <laughs> After the shop is clean, they all get together and have a special workers meal called makanai. They make a different menu each day and today they're having grilled akodai fish. It looks so good. How is it? <laughs> it is quiet. <laughs> so that's another one in the books. If you want to visit this shop and experience it yourself, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. So that's what it's like behind the counter at a local family owned tempura restaurant here in Rapangi. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.